Hare Krishna, Sam Samadhi of Canto 5, Chapter 9, The Supreme Character of Jadabharata. Bharata, the son of Rishabha, was born in a rich Kshatriya family. But due to his willful negligence of spiritual duties and excessive attachment to an insignificant deer, he did not attain success in one life and he was obliged to take birth again as a deer. But due to his strong position as a devotee, he was gifted with the remembrance of his past life and he became repentant, always thinking of Krishna. Thus, he was born in a good Brahmana family. There was a Brahmana in the line of Angira who was endowed with self-control, austerity, Vedic study, renunciation, satisfaction, tolerance, um, gentle character, knowledge, non-enviousness, satisfaction, and self-realization. The Brahmana with his first wife had nine sons who were as qualified as himself. However, with the second wife, he gave birth to twins, a male and a female. This male was actually Bharat Maharaj, who was reborn. After giving up the body of a deer, Bharata took birth as the son of this Brahmana. Bharat remembered his previous lives by the Lord's mercy. He was afraid and cautious of the association of non-devotee relatives and friends. He feared obstructions to the progress of his Krishna consciousness and always thought of the lotus feet of the Lord and chanted his glories which can save one from the bondage of fated action. So that others would not talk to him, he manifested himself to the public like a madman, dull, blind and deaf. The Brahmana was always affectionate to his son, and seeing him unfit for Grihastasham, he performed his samskaras only up to the end of Brahmachari life. Although his son was unwilling, he instructed him in cleanliness and archaman, thinking that the son should be taught properly by the father. Jada Bharat was completely absorbed in devotional service within, therefore it was not necessary for him to execute the regulator principles of creative activities. Jada Bharat acted like a fool before his father. He performed actions in reverse order to stop his father from instructing further. Still, his father tried to teach him the Gayatri Mantra during the spring and summer, but it was unsuccessful. He taught Brahmachari activities like cleanliness, Vedic study, vows, rules, service to Guru and fire, but Jadabharat was unwilling and failed all the teachings and, he, and his father failed all his attempts. Without fulfilling his desire, the attached and forgetful Brahmana met with inevitable death that appeared by the influence of time. Thereafter, his younger wife, entrusting her twin children to the older wife, voluntarily died with her husband and departed for Pitruloka. The nine stepbrothers of Jadabharat, although learned in the Vedas, they were not very spiritually enlightened. They considered Bharata to be dull and they could not understand his exalted position. So, after his their father's death, they abandoned uh, their attempts to educate Bharata. Jada Bharat was not really uh, very heavily responsive to the mistreatment that was done to him. He did not protest. When degraded people, two-legged animals, addressed him as mad, dull, deaf and dumb, he neither protested nor did he try to convince them. When others engaged him by force and work as a slave for wages, he acted just according to their desires. He would eat whatever food came by its own accord. He never ate anything for sense gratification and he was already liberated. He was full in the consciousness of devotional service and unaffected by dualities. As strong as a bull, he did not cover his limbs in the cold, heat, wind or rain. Because his body was not properly maintained and dirty, his spiritual effulgence and knowledge were covered like a gem covered by dirt. He wore only a dirty loincloth and, and his secret thread had become so dirty that it appeared blackish. Ignorant people called him Brahmabandhu. Being thus insulted and neglected by materialistic people, he just wandered here and there. Taking advantage of this, his stepbrothers engaged him in agricultural work 
though he did not know where to spread dirt or where to make the ground level or uneven. They would give him broken rice, oil cakes, the shaft of rice, worm-eaten grains, and burnt grains that stuck to the pot. But Jada Bharat gladly accept all of this as if they were nectar. Jada Bharat was actually very determined to finish his business in this material world. He just didn't care for this world of duality and he was complete in Krishna consciousness and oblivious to good and evil, happiness and distress. Once, a leader of the decoys desiring a son was offering Bhadrakali, a dull man, a Purusha Pashu in sacrifice. But the man-animal intended for sacrifice had escaped by chance and the leader of all these followers, they found Jadabharat. Jadabharat was wandering here and there in the middle of the night and they found him in the paddy field. So, they considered Jadabharat to possess all the qualities suitable for a man-animal. In happiness, they bound him and brought him to the temple goddess of Kali. Being completely surrendered to the Lord, Jadabharat did not protest when he was brought for slaughter. According to their concocted ritual, the decoids bathed, dressed and decorated Bharat with ornaments, sandalwood pulp, garlands and tilak, and then fed him sumptuously. They had him sit in front of Bhadra Kali while offering incense, lambs, garlands, sprouts, fruits and flowers. They sang songs and prayers and sounded drums and bugles. The chief priest, desiring to please Bhadra Kali, with the blood of Jadabharat, raised his fearsome sword, consecrating it by her mantra. While Jadab, uh, at this time, Kali decided to protect Jadabharat and she considered why Jada Bharat should not be killed. She thought, the decoits are low-minded and envious. They are bound to the lower modes. They are overpowered by the desire to become rich. They were audacious enough to disobey Vedic injunctions. They were ready to kill Jada Bharat, a self-realized soul and a brahmana in a cruel and unauthorized manner. Whereas Jada Bharat was the best friend of all. He was no one's enemy. He was always absorbed in meditation on the Lord. He was born of a good Brahmana father. Killing him was forbidden even if he, he were an enemy or an aggressive person. Therefore, Goddess Kali understood that the sinful decoys were about to kill the great devotee. Her deity's body burst and she personally emerged from it in a body burning with an intense and intolerable effulgence. Intolerant to the offense of to a devotee, the infuriated goddess Kali displayed her fierce curved cheek, frowning brows and glowing reddish eyes. She assumed a frightening body as if to destroy the entire creation. Leaping violently from the altar, she immediately decapitated and uh, the head of all the rogues and thieves with that very sword. She then drank with her associates the hot blood that flowed from their necks as if they were liquor. Becoming intoxicated, they began to play with those heads, tossing them about like balls. When an envious person commits an offense before a great personality, he is always punished in this way. How was Jadabharat undisturbed by this and not showing anger to those who tried to kill him? Devotees in general are undisturbed. There is no wonder that the highest of the devotees, the Bhagavata Paramahamsanam, can be undisturbed even if threatened by decapitation. They have severed the tight knot of bodily identification and they are the friends of all, acting for their everyone's welfare. They never contemplate harming anyone. They are always protected by the Attentive Lord with the Sudarshan Chapter because he has completely taken shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord. This ends the summary of Canto 5, Chapter 9, the Supreme Character of Chadabharata. Hare Krishna.